Without doubt, one of the most interesting uh, figures in all of American history is George Washington, the great leader of the Revolution and the first president of the United States under the Constitution. Uh, historians will commonly talk about how charismatic and how much presence Washington had, his, his stature, his uh, clear visage. Uh, people just very impressed with him. Uh, don't know how much to make out of this, but one of the reasons that he was so impressive in his appearance was that he didn't have smallpox marks all over his face, which was pretty common for folks at that time. Turns out that when Washington was 19 years old, he visited the Barbado, Barbados in the West Indies with his half-brother Lawrence, uh, got smallpox. Uh, historians tend to say it was a mild case because it did leave him without any uh, visual evidence on his face. Uh, smallpox often caused people to lose their hair, to go blind, things like that. But uh, Washington did stop writing in his daily journal at that time for about a month. Uh, and when he finally began to write again, talked about how really sick he had been. But in any case, once you get smallpox, that's it. You don't get it again. And so later in his life, when he was uh, commander-in-chief of the Continental Army, uh, here he was in the midst of smallpox-ridden troops, uh, his lieutenants, his aides, uh, suffering terribly with this, and he was immune. Uh, he could walk around among the men. He could, he could uh, do, do anything without having to fear smallpox. And also, uh, being concerned about smallpox because it was such a terrible detriment to his soldiers. Uh, at first hesitant because he was afraid the British would take advantage of this because once he began to inoculate the troops and they're ill for a while as they recover, uh, Washington ordered after 1777 all uh, Continental Army recruits, unless they'd already had smallpox, to be inoculated against it. And so very forward thinking uh, when it came to, uh, to smallpox. Um, so in the case of George Washington, there's no question that this disease, or in, in this case the absence of it in, in his situation particularly, and his willingness to deal with it directly while he was uh, commander-in-chief, had a profound effect uh, on the politics and on the future of the United States and on his status as uh, this very uh, successful, very capable, charismatic uh, leader in the order of public. Uh, James Flexner, the great historian, uh, said George Washington was the indispensable man, that we just couldn't have done it without him. And so that trip to Barbados, that mild case of smallpox, seems to have had quite a profound effect on the future politics of the United States and the future success of the United States. And in that connection, uh, there's a little interesting side note here. Uh, we often worry about biological warfare, what some person or some country may decide to do with pathogens to uh, uh, afflict the enemy. Uh, we do have evidence that during the siege of Boston uh, in 1776-77, excuse me, 75-76, when Washington took command of the uh, American army that was trying to get the British out of town, that the British actually sent smallpox infected uh, people cross into the American lines to try to infect them with smallpox. So once again, here's Washington in charge, his headquarters at Cambridge, very aware, very sensitive to this disease that had struck him at an early age and, and uh, about which he had thought and had considered his entire life. So no doubt in this case, this disease, smallpox, having a very powerful effect on the future course of the United States.